the cloud. Thank you. Welcome everybody officially to our meeting. My name is Chanel and I'm the current club president for Fresno City Toastmasters. I'm gonna start off our meeting by reading for us and then we also record this and put to YouTube so people can watch. So I'm gonna start off by reading our club mission statement, which is also the mission statement for Toastmasters International. Our mission is to provide a supportive and positive learning experience to empower our members to develop both communication and leadership skills, which results in greater self-confidence and personal growth. A couple of points about our facility that we're using, we want to give thanks to Michael Wu, who's a club member and the owner of this business and lets us meet here every week. And then also for those of you in person, there is a restroom office door on the corner if you need to use it and it is clean. <laughs> for everybody who's joining us on Zoom, we ask that they mute themselves when somebody else is speaking to avoid feedback. And then they will also use jazz hands for applause instead of actual applause. But those of us in person, we can go ahead and applaud like usual. The, before we get going with our meeting, we're going to address the agenda. As Joey was just saying, we don't have any speeches today. Unfortunately, Sarah had to cancel hers at the last minute. So we'll be doing an extended table topics, which is the extemporaneous practicing part of Toastmasters. But I wanna make sure that everybody has a role that they can do on the agenda. So I think Kalani, you're not down for anything. Would you like to grab a roll? And Emerson, would you like to grab something? Sure. Absolutely. So you got okay. Denny doing two. She's doing, looks like, oh no, Chanel's doing two. Grammarian, off counter, maybe somebody could pick up that one. You got timer okay. there. You got timer there. You can take that off my hands. I won't be too mad. Okay, Emerson, would you, you wanna do the timer? Can I do off camera? Yeah. How, how do I signal? Would it be better for the yeah. people on the screen? Yeah, you're probably right, Emerson. It'd probably be better for me to do. Yeah, we haven't found a great way to do it yet. Yep. Okay. I can do off camera. Okay, you can do off camera. Yeah. Perfect. Um, and then, Kalani, would you mind doing Grammarian? Because I actually didn't get the chance since I was running late to pull up the word to put it into the chat for you guys. <laughs> Absolutely. If you um, if you want a pointer on that, I was gonna do the word altruism. Okay, so we can write in, Emerson's gonna do all counter. And Kalani is gonna do the grammarian. Okay, with that then, I would like to get our meeting officially started by turning the podium virtually over to our Toastmaster today, who is Ms. Epp. Thank you, Chanel. So as the Toastmaster for the day, I will be highlighting everybody's roles, giving them an opportunity to say what it is that they're going to be doing. And then also introducing the theme for the day, which is serving others, which I think personally for me is great because I am a volunteer coordinator for Heinz Hospice. And being in the volunteering world, it's made me really open my eyes and it has opened doors for different opportunities to volunteers and to serve others and to give back and lift in this community. And I just think it is a wonderful way, just not only for the benefit of others, but for yourself as well. So I know this world is very busy and we all have many things on our plates that we're balancing, but if you do get the opportunity to, you know, have some downtime to give back, there are different platforms that you can reach out to to see what's out there. And like I said, there's many different things that you can volunteer for, <laughs> patient care, Heinz Hospice. So, uh, you know, if you're wanting to do something else, I highly encourage you to look into the volunteering world. With that said, I do want to introduce our general evaluator for the day, Ms. Denny Mason. Thank you, Heather. 
Today, I'm going to introduce our evaluation team, and this is part of Toastmasters. We have different roles that we participate in so that we give a good evaluation of speeches and also learn how to evaluate. So our first person will be Kalani, who's our grammarian today. Kalani. Thanks, Denny. Ms. Chanel, our president, had given us a opportunity to use a word of the day. However, when I Googled it really quickly, uh, dictionary.com came up with adversity, which I also felt was a really good fit and something that was really easy to tie into today's meeting. Adversity, as it also is included in the chat. You can also pull it up for all those who are virtual, and I'm sure Ms. Chanel has it taken care of over there for our live folks. Adversity is a state or instance of serious or continued difficulty or misfortune. An example of this word in a sentence is, the movie is about a group of determined mountain climbers who triumph in the face in the face of adversity. At the end of the meeting, I'll be giving a report to those who are able to encompass this word in their table topics or in their reports throughout this entire session. Now we'll go ahead and pass the torch back to our Toastmaster of the day, I believe. It was Heather, or was it Denny? I'm General evaluator. Yeah. Yes, thank you, Miss. <laughs> <laughs> <Okay. laughs> My bad. That's okay. We learn to overcome adversity here in Toastmasters. This is where we practice. Our next team member is our awe counter, and this is something. This is a role that you'll find a lot of um, it, it is a lot of fun. This is, I think, the funnest role. Emerson, will you explain the awe counter role to us? Thanks, Jenny. Uh, my role will be to uh, point out uh, filler words that are used as a crutch in moments of nervous uh, speaking, such as uh, or but, or you know. And so I will point these out to you so that you can catch them and be more comfortable with the use of pauses to communicate more effectively. Okay. Thank you, Emerson. Our next team member is Joey Myers, who's going to be our timer and our Zoom master today. So if you'll, if you'll explain both of those to us, Joey. Will do, Miss Denny. So I know Denny gave me a text me about the app that you can use for timers. See if I can show it. Let's see, finger. It is, can you see this one? It's timer. It is, oops, that's the weather channel. It is timer four TM. Timer all one word. Timer, the number four TM. So for those that are interested on the online or even in person on doing this role then get that app. And then in that app, it has the different stopwatches. I know you can't really read that because my camera's not there, but it'll give you a speech, which is usually a five to seven minute, a table talk or table topics, which is one to two minutes. And then evaluation is two to three minutes. And what I'm here to do is some people face adversity. Either they talk too much like me, or they don't talk enough and that's the adversity. That's what we use the timing role here as an evaluation tool. Because in here, if we do a table talk, it's one to two minutes. You'll see, and I kind of see my light is blocking a little bit, but you'll see a green. My behind me will turn green. My background will look something like this at one minute. And then when we hit two, a minute and a half, you'll see the yellow. And then we'll see at two minutes, you'll see the red. So that's what I'll be doing here. It's a little easier to do the timer on Zoom, especially if you have those backgrounds, it's easier to see like Emerson had suggested. Now on the Zoom side of things, we are recording this. When we were doing it 100% live, we had a camera, a recording camera that we would record the speeches, table topics, things like that. And then we would upload them, unlisted links, send them over. But for this, we record the whole thing. We upload it to YouTube for marketing purpose, things like that. And then you can go in and, and go to your area where you did maybe a speech or you did some table topics. And it gives you another layer of evaluation that you can look at your 
how you're presenting and are you distracting from your message by doing different things and things like that. So I will be in charge of the different views of our Zoom meeting as we record it, as you'll see, we'll go in, zoom in on a speaker, we'll zoom out into the grid like we are now. So that's what I'll be doing today, the timer roll and the Zoom roll. Thank you. Thank you, Joey. That's our evaluation team for today. Thank you all for taking a job and helping us work our meeting today. At the end of the meeting, I'll give a short evaluation of how I think the meeting went. And I'm gonna turn this back over to our Toastmaster, Heather. Thank you, Danny. Thank you, team. So we don't have any scheduled speeches today. However, we do have the opportunity to have a table topic. So the table, talk, table topic master today is Miss Monica Diaz. So today's topic is serving others. We all know that serving others does have adversities. So there are some things that they have to do when they don't always agree to them. So for today's table topic, I thought we would do for and against. I'm gonna put up four different things and you're gonna to have to argue for one minute for it. And then once the green goes, you're gonna to have to switch it over for against. Ooh. For example, cats make better pets than dogs. So for one minute, I would argue that cats are better pets than dogs. And when the green shows up, you switch the role. Dogs are better than cats. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the topics up and I will read them out as well. And I'm gonna put four just to kind of give a little bit diversity on that. Let's see. So the first one is going to be one, men gossip more than women. Two, bottled water is better than tap water. Three, toilet paper must be rolled over, not under. Or four, just keep it simple. A day at the snow is better than a day at the beach. So let's see who's going to go first. Do we have any volunteers? Hello. Thank you, Heather. <laughs> So just quickly, how long do I have to argue for it? What's my? One minute. So as soon as the green turns, mm -hmm. then you go for against. OK. I am ready. So I'm going to answer number four, that a day at the snow is better than a day at the beach. And the reason why I believe that a day at the snow is better than a day at the beach is just because of all the happy memories I personally have growing up as a kid, my favorite Christmas was a white Christmas that we had up in Shaver Lake on the day of Christmas. So it was a genuine white Christmas, beautiful snowing, just light snow all over the place with hot cocoa and a beautiful uh, uh, Christmas tree all lit up in the background. It's just very scenic and very homey. And I hope to be able to recreate that one day when I'm older with my own kids. It just makes me happy. And even though it, yes, is colder, you can get all bundled up and have an excuse to cuddle up with your loved one. And, you know, just to be able to go down the snowy hills and make snow angels. However, you do have the beach and the ocean that you can sink into and get farther and farther and just be one with nature. Uh, I also have a very fun memory at a friend's golden birthday. She turned 31 on the 31st and all of us were at the beach and I normally never get into the ocean, but I got convinced to maybe because I had one too many to drink, but I did. And when I went in, I kid you not, there was a seal right next to me. And you don't really get that in up in the uh, you know forest. You, you maybe get some squirrels, but no seals. And that was just much more magical and they're cute, but I wouldn't necessarily want to get too much closer. <laughs> So it's a beach. It's just very free. And I enjoy just being able to get away and relax. So that's why I think the beach is better than the forest. <laughs> Thank 
you for that, Heather. Thanks. I was going to say, Emerson, I bet you got a lot of work <laughs> to do in <with> that one. <laughs> so since we did someone on Zoom, let's have the next volunteer come from the live audience. Do I have any volunteers there? All right. Uh, fellow Toastmasters, uh, I would have to say I wanted to address the stereotype that men gossip more than women. I tend to agree that they gossip more because they have a clever way of hiding their gossip. So what they'll do is they'll talk about how silly women are for gossiping so much, but then they'll follow up that statement with their own gossip. They'll gossip in the weight room. They'll gossip when they're taking a job with other men. They'll gossip at work. And the way that they do it is they mention it in a way where isn't it silly how women gossip? And then they will think that that gives them a license to gossip. And so men are just more sneaky about their play in gossip. And so I think that this, it's a misnomer to say that one gender does it more than the other. However, I think that women are more informative when they gossip because men will often talk about emotional things, even though they're, they're known as the non-emotional gender, they will talk about how silly it is or how dumb something is. Women will give a lot of facts. And of course, these are terrible stereotypes, but I'm just going along with the flow. However, women do gossip well. They will give you information, dates, times, who said to what, and so forth. So I think that they each have their specialty and they have their craft. And so I think that we can learn from both, but all in all, I think that gossip brings adversary, adversary, so we should avoid it. Madam Toastmaster. Thank you for that, Emerson. Do I have any volunteers for the Zoom? I'll go. I'll do the one that probably people are avoiding, but I got a good idea on this one, the toilet paper one. <laughs> Toilet paper over versus under. You'll probably know just by my answer which one I do like. Let's first talk about over. For you overachievers and for, the, for those king and queen multitaskers, has to be over. The role has to be over. Because how else can you, back in the day, you, you read a newspaper or you read a magazine sitting on the abode, where now you got your phone that has all the same information on there, but more. And you can have the phone in one hand and you can have the hand with the over easy to be able to pull the, the toilet paper and then use the heel of your palm to tear it off. And that's the whole purpose of having it over. You can't do that when the toilet paper is underneath. You have nothing to really push against to be able to tear off the toilet paper. So again, for those that are really good multitaskers, for those that are overachievers, that you can get your information and you can tear off the pieces of toilet paper however you want to use it. However, when we have it underneath, those are for those people that are single-minded, task-oriented, process-oriented, and would never, ever be on their phone sitting on the, the john while they're doing something so important as what we do when we sit on the john and they would never ever think about trying to do trying to leverage one hand one hand doing one thing and another hand doing th another thing they would never be the drummer they would never do anything like that and it keeps you on a single minded focus type a personality and that is the toilet paper underneath is the way to go when it comes to that so when we look at both sides of the argument, the over versus the under, it depends on the character, the personality of the person. Thank you. Thank you for that, Joey. I can go on it. Awesome. For the next one. I will take the, the final remaining point that has not been addressed, the water. So firstly, for bottled water and against tap water. Number one, everybody knows that tap water does not taste good. <laughs> we all have filters or we use our refrigerator because the taste is just not incredible. We also know that in cities 
and suburbs, as most of us live, they put a lot of chlorine in the tap water, which studies have shown is not healthy to be drinking in large amounts of over time. So that is a, I think, significant reason to consider not just drinking tap water or at least to buy a filter or something to purify the water. We have done this at my house. My roommates specifically do not like drinking tap water because of the taste. But man, bottled, uh, bottled water, that is also a big problem because it is an incredible, in my opinion, an incredible waste to constantly be drinking bottled water and reusing all of that plastic and all of that plastic when drinking tap water or water out of a filter and putting it in a reusable bottle can save, can reduce waste in an incredible way. And we know that plastic is not the greatest thing for the environment because it does not break down. Plastic will literally stay in the ground for thousands of years. And I, I would not consider myself a hardcore environmentalist, but I think, I do believe, and I think everybody should to an extent that we ought to do what we can to try to decrease our waste and be at least conscientious of the impact that we're having um, to try to be, yes. And then also bottled water is uh, very expensive. You have to keep buying it. <laughs> A lot more expensive than tap water, right? So those are my arguments for and against. Thank you. Thank you for that. Anybody on Zoom? We're going to give it a shot. Yeah. We will go with number four. A day at the snow is better than a day at the beach. I had the pleasure of dating a country boy from Utah. <laughs> My adversity was being exposed to an entirely different climate than I've ever been exposed to. I experienced my first white Christmas. And let me tell you, as you are walking through the outlets, it is snowing outside. You are bundled up in beanie, mitten, scarf, overcoat. You hear Christmas carols being sung on the speakers. It feels like what you would expect. It felt like watching a children's Christmas movie in full effect. It was everything you can imagine. On top of that, snowboarding. Who does not love being outdoors? Being able to get that fresh snow on your face. If you ski, same thing. There's also, I believe it's called snowmobiling. That's also incredibly fun. On the other hand, you will not pay me enough to be driving in that snow. I don't care if I see one snowflake or if it's a blizzard. If I see something that hits my windshield that is not rain, I'm gonna pull over and the person who's in that passenger seat is going to be driving. There is nothing better than being from the coast, in my opinion, that I actually would leave my high school. My mother does not know this, so please keep this between us and just go to the beach. Our high school overlooked the beach. You'd spend your lunches there after school programs were always over there. And you get that dopamine hit, you get to swim, you get to play with sand, there's movies on the beach. What are you gonna do in the snow? Just snowboard for an hour and get sunburned for, and being cold? No, thank you. I'm a Cali girl for life. <laughs> Anybody else from Zoom? I, I know we have a new member there. I'm sorry. Could you uh, re-say her name? I know this is not mandatory for you, but if you wanted to, you, you can present yeah. Beth. Yeah. If not, we'll resume with the rest of us. Excuse me. Um, yeah, give me two weeks because I'm I'm sorry, I cannot hear her. Give me two weeks. Yeah, no oh. worries. No okay. worries. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yes. Yeah, no worries. Not for no worries. And Denise, did you want Denny, did you want to go next or do you want me to go next? Whatever you prefer. 
Sure, I'll go. Have you ever had the experience of you just get to know somebody, you realize whatever your political beliefs are that they believe the same way you do, whatever your religious beliefs are, you realize that you're kind of on the same wavelength. And then you ask to go in the bathroom and you sit down and you look over and realize, no, it's not an over roll, it's an under roll. I'm completely disillusioned with this person. It's terrible. When I started dating my husband, I said, you do understand that in this household, we're an over the roll paper roller in our bathroom. And he said, oh, okay. okay. <laughs> there are actually people that don't know the difference. They think it doesn't matter. When I go into somebody's bathroom, if the paper is coming out from underneath, I change it because I want them to know that I was there. <laughs> On the other hand, I'm sure that there are people that just really, just like when you, you haven't voted up to a certain age, you don't realize that it's important. Well, you just put a toilet paper roll in whichever way it goes, it doesn't matter. You don't realize that you're actually leaving a terrible impression on everybody who walks into your bathroom. It's true. I'm gonna flip back to, it's so important to be an over the role person. Thank you. Thank you for that, Denny. So I will go last, of course. <laughs> as fun as it was to come up with these topics, it was a little bit I know it's, it's a little bit hard to do, so I'm going to give it my shot. I will be doing a number one men gossip more than women. The other day, I was sitting on the couch on the phone with my friend. And long and behold, my husband put his, shoulder, his hand on my shoulder and said, Hey, hey, who are you talking to? Who are you on the phone with? He wanted to know the details of that phone conversation, the juicy details that I had with my friend. And after we had that conversation of learning of who loves to gossip more, I came to realization that my husband, who is a man, gossips more than I do. I could not, I could not bring myself to understand that until I actually had that conversation with my sister, who heard my conversation through my husband, because my husband in turn told her what I was talking to my friend about, and I, I was very at all with that. Another thing that my husband loves to gossip with other men about is going to be stuff about who's getting drafted, who's the next new model that's coming up, or even the stuff with who's going to be the next person to win the World Series. On the other hand, I do really enjoy as a female, I really do enjoy my gossip time with my friends. I enjoy hearing what they are wearing to the ball or, or who wore what to the ball and gossiping about who's going to be the next couple to break up or who's going to be the next couple to make up. I enjoy having that conversations with my friends. And sometimes even though it's not good gossip, it's, it's bad gossip. It's just something as a female and as a woman, I feel that we kind of thrive to hear it over and over. That's it. <laughs> now that table topics are done, I am going to give it back to the General, general evaluator? Correct. Thank you, Monica. Great job on the table topic. That was very interesting today. I hope, I hope we didn't scare you off, Beth. We were having yeah. extra fun today. <laughs> I'm going to turn this over to Joey, who's going to give us a timer report. Thank you, Miss Denny. And for our timer report on just table topics today, Heather came in again. This is our one to two minutes. Green at one, yellow at minute and a half, red at two. And Monica proposed an interesting feat with the table topic saying at the green, which was at the one minute, you flip over your argument to the other side. So that was an interesting 
difference on table topics. Heather came in at two minutes, seven seconds, just slightly over, but not too bad. Two and a half, if we have a competition, like a Toastmasters competition, which we do, 2.30 is disqualifying. So that's within our time, 2.07. Emerson came in at 1.24, and I liked how he used both. He didn't go completely a whole minute. He almost did like 45, 45. That still works because you end up in that, that minute and a half or that minute to two minute time frame. Mr. Joey, who thought adversity being talks too much, came in right at two minutes. So it's a shocker to some of you, I know. Chanel, two minutes, 11 seconds. So she came in right under that 2.30 mark. Kalani, one minute, 55 seconds, right on time. Denny, one fifty-six. And then Monica, last but not least, came in at 136. So great work, everybody, on your table topics and staying within mm -hmm. our time and not or dealing with that adversity in the way you needed to do. Very good. Thank you, Joey. It was interesting today. I think having that one minute marker may have kept us within our time frame a little bit better, just sort of as a reminder. Very good. Emerson, are you ready for our I report? I am. Okay. Great job, Monica. I really enjoyed uh, shifting gears when it comes to making an argument one way and then having to switch it. I think that was a, an excellent exercise. In terms of our I'll counter report, I think everyone overall did very well. I just caught a few things that might help. With Chanel, I saw that she said uh, and or a significant. So she was deciding in her head whether to use an and or a, but she used the correct one at the end. And she had one uh. With, with Heather, I counted one uh, one you know. And I also caught you saying up in the forest, which was OK. Colloquial speak is always fun. So I thought I just caught that. With Joey, he said he repeated the the twice and, and stuttered when he said the ender. And I stuttered already. Kalani, no us, no errors. With Denny, I caught just like you repeated it once. But other than that, great job. With Monica, I, I saw that you said put my hand over his shoulder or put my shoulder you, you kind of st stuttered when you said shoulder and hand. And then you said, very, uh, very at all with that. And I would say, was in awe with that. That was the only thing I caught with that. And with our guest, I counted two, two ums. And with me, I probably had a bunch. So <laughs> I, I caught one of um, for one you ever said, right when you were starting out. Yes, so okay, know. awesome, all right. Thank you. Thank you, Emerson. When you're scared, I mean, the two minute talk, I could give that in about 10 seconds. <laughs> That's pretty normal. <laughs> That's pretty normal. <laughs> my, my first table topic was about 10 seconds. <laughs> my, the, my second Toastmasters meeting, and I, that's all I could work up the courage to do. <laughs> oh, <yay. laughs> <laughs> There's adversity. Like, you know, yeah, Beth, we, we all start out that way. Mm. But this is where we come to practice and make mistakes and do all of that. So that when we go out in the real world, we can be better. Yeah, I need to play. Thank you to the team. Thank you for stepping up and participating today. We've had a good meeting. And Beth, just so you know, when we carry these things out into the world, you'll notice. This next week, you'll start thinking about your ahs and ums as you're speaking. You'll notice when you say it. Funny um, things start to happen once we once we start paying attention to it. I'm, I'm going to turn the meeting back over to our president, Chanel. Did we do the grammarian report? I'm sorry. Uh, maybe not. I think we got it. Kalani. Kalani. She looks like a caged tiger over there, tigress. <laughs> thank you i will also give uh monica some props on that table topic i think you should be leading table topics more often the only reason why i believe i did not get a uh, or um in there is because i had way too many ideas flowing through my head <laughs> that the challenge is getting it all out in time 
No rule, right? <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was fantastic. For today's word of the day, if I forget you, please let me know. I was really invested in how everyone structured their table topics today. So it may be that I missed someone. But on my list, I have Denny, Joey, Emerson, and myself using the word adversity. Is there anyone that I may have left out? Monica. Hey, Monica. <laughs> Perfect. All righty. Well, thank you, everyone. Thank you, Denny. Very good. Thank you. Now I'm going to turn this back over to our President Chanel. Thank you. So first, um, accolades. Thank you to Emerson for stepping in last minute to be our all counter, and thank you to thank you to Kalani for stepping in last minute as for Marion. Thank you to Joey for doing double role yet again, and always being our Zoom master. <laughs> and then I, I also want to recognize Monica. That was an awesome table topic. For me, it was, for me personally, it was very challenging to think of two different arguments in that time span, but I think it was it was really good. It challenged us all yeah. in a good way. And I would I would like to see more of that from myself and all of us when we're leading table topics. So thank you for bringing that creativity into the club. The one announcement that we have today is that we are not going to be meeting next week on Tuesday. We're taking April 12th off of club and observance of spring break and Easter to kind of give our, our club members a break and some people are going to be out of town. So do not come here. Do not show up on Zoom. No one will be there. <laughs> will not be starting the meeting. And um, I bet you already shared a little bit, but we do like to give our guests time at the end of the meeting just to um, express any thoughts, questions about the meeting, um, comments, and then sh to share a little bit about what you're hoping to get out of your semesters. Okay. Well, it seems I can talk comfortable with this group. Um, it's really scary, and I'm, I'm shocked at how scared I am because I remember getting over that and really kind of liking to be talking in, in front of people. Um, but I think this is a, a, a good place to, to grow and, um, and develop um, professionally and personally. Um, um, oh, yeah. No, I don't. <laughs> uh, okay, what I hope to get out of it is is growth. I I hope to become comfortable and think about my message more than I'm thinking about how I'm being perceived. Mm -hmm. The self consciousness that comes with getting up in front of people mm -hmm. yeah. to get over that and um, and to think about outwardly instead of uh, inwardly. It's more. Um, it's, it's not selfish in a bad sense, but it's it's easy to be thinking that everyone is thinking about you and they're not. Mm -hmm. so, um, that's what I'm hoping for, growth. And so I want this to be able to overflow into my professional life so that I'm uh, stronger in presentation mm -hmm. and just, you know, with, stronger with people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's awesome. How, how long ago were you in Toastmasters before? Oh, gosh. <laughs> uh, it's been like 30 years. Oh, okay. Yeah, we're yeah, traveling a long time ago. Yeah. Um, but it was really helpful because everyone was supportive. It, was, it felt safe because you could mess up and mm -hmm. they weren't going to laugh you, you know, out of the room or anything. So um, I'm... I know there have been a lot of changes. I just want to learn as much as I can and grow as much as I can. And I'm probably going to have to force myself into new situations. So just bear with me. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We, okay. We're all the same boat. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Super glad to have you. Thank you. My, my Toastmaster story is really similar. So I was terrified of public speaking mm -hmm. for most of my life. Um, my young life so far. <laughs> mm -hmm. And like took communications and it in college, I was terrified. I went to a religious school and took like a preaching class and was just like terrified. 
And so Vinny actually was on Zoom. She invited me a couple of years ago to check out Toastmasters. And I was terrified. I <laughs> got up and made my 10-minute table talk and went back down. And I think it's amazing two years later how much I've been able to grow in that area to get up mm -hmm. in front of everybody every week like this. And you do a great job, too. Yeah. Job. And now she's our president. Yeah. Yeah. Got roped into that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Did you guys add anything to that? No, I think she's in the right place. And everybody comes in for different reasons, but we all come in for the same reason. And to get better at presenting, right? And that was one of the things I didn't know about Toastmasters before I joined. I was a little bit more versed in groups. I was a little bit more comfortable in groups at the time I was teaching fitness classes, big group classes, like 20, 30 in a group. So I was pretty comfortable with people's eyes on me when I came in. But for me, my mind races, like Kalani mentioned today, and you got monkey mind, and it's just like you got all these thoughts and being able to collect them, organize them, and then take almost like the, what is it, the magnifying glass and the sunshine, you got the sunshine with all the, the light all the way around 360 degrees, and you're taking a magnifying glass to those thoughts, those racing thoughts, and you're trying to focus them into one spot. And for me, that was my big challenge. But everybody comes in for different reasons. Some of us have a hard time getting words out. Some of us have a hard time keeping our words in. And but we're all here for the same reason. So you're in the right spot. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank, thank, thank you for sharing. But yeah. Thanks, Beth. And welcome. Thank you. And so real quickly, we're not meeting next week, but we can fill out the agenda for the 19th. I have Heather coming down to speak on April 19th. And then also Mike Ellis is not here today. And I'm going to put myself down to speak on the 26th. I'm getting really close to being on my first pathway, so I would like to finish that before the postmaster's year is over in June. Does anybody else want to sign up for the next three, four weeks out to give a speech? I'll take one. I have to do the second part of my speech, too, where I come in and give the same yes. speech and I incorporate the feedback I got from Sarah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Would you like to be the 19th or the 26th? I'll do the 26th. Okay. Yeah. Wonderful. And jump me in there too, Chanel, please. With Emerson. Okay. You sure? Yep. I gotta get I gotta get mine done too. We gotta we got what June, end of June, but to get everything. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Monica, you wanna get yourself on there for another speech? I I won't be able to do the 19th, but I can. I don't know if you have three speakers already on the 26th or I can do the week after. Okay. Well, I think that I don't mind pushing myself back. If you want to do the 26th, then I'll put myself into the first week of May. And I got to head out, but Chanel, if you want to put me down for the 19th as Toastmaster, I can okay. take that on. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you, Julie. Take care. Have a good rest of your week. Have a good Easter. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.